Britain could become the first country in the world to permit babies to be born with three genetic parents by the end of next year. A landmark decision by the Department of Health opens the door to techniques which will save lives by screening out inherited defects through the use of donated DNA from a second donor mother. The method raises many questions of ethics, identity and whether it would lead to other more controversial genetic selection. Jane Dodge reports. Sharon Bernardi has kept her son's room intact. We met Edward three years ago. Once a healthy toddler, he developed severe physical and learning disabilities as he grew up, caused by a defect in his mother's mitochondria, the tiny power units inside our cells. Sharon lost six babies because of it. In 2011, she also lost Edward. He was 21. Edward taught me so much and I... I you know, you don't get anywhere if you don't try, so you've got to keep trying. I, I would personally say go ahead and try this new treatment, yeah. A technique to help women like Sharon has been pioneered by scientists at Newcastle University. So far it's only been tested on animals, but now the government's chief medical officer has given it the go-ahead, arguing it could save around 10 lives every year. It's not many, but just think the difference it makes to the lives. They will be the same people in terms of hair, personality, whether they can do things. They'll look the same, their characters will be the same, but they won't be ill. It aims to help couples where the woman is carrying a genetic disorder. DNA is used from a healthy female donor to create an embryo and in time a baby, which will contain DNA from all three adults, hence the three-parent label. The technique involves using two fertilised eggs, one from the mother and one from the donor. The nucleus of the embryo, the bit that contains the vast majority of our genes, is removed from both eggs and the donor's is discarded. The nucleus of the parent's embryo is inserted into the donor embryo, which has healthy mitochondria, and then implanted into the mother's womb. We're talking about three-person DNA. Simon Fischel was part of the team that produced the first test tube baby way back in 1978. He's delighted that he's now one step closer to being able to offer this new technique to patients. Couples like we see who, who've had many, many babies, six, seven, eight children, who have been born and died of this disease, may eventually be able to have their own healthy child, who will even be able to have their own child normally then, without ever having fear of passing that disorder on, which is excellent medicine. This procedure could be available at clinics like this one within two years. If it is approved, the UK will be the first place to offer such a technique. But being at the cutting edge of science once again brings with it big ethical concerns. There's already a huge number of conditions and characteristics that we can screen for and that we find if embryos, for example, are carrying them, the embryos are discarded. And that, for a lot of people, I think, has a, a kind of uncomfortable eugenic implication. So I think that would be the, the main focus of our concern, that this is another step down the road of you know, uh, uh, having too much power to design the next generation rather than just accepting them unconditionally. This advance comes too late for Sharon Bernardi. All she has now are memories. MPs will have the final say when they vote on this issue next year.